What's up guys? So here's what we got on the agenda for today. So I'm currently running 33s on here, sitting at eight inches of lift. But my plan is to get 35s put on here really soon. And as you can see, I'm already really close to the back edge of my fender right here. And so what I'm hoping I can do is I wanna see how much more I can go out before my stock front drive shaft will not work. So what I'm thinking I want to do is unbolt that and see how much slip I have left in it and then see if I can push my axle out another inch and see if that will give me the space to clear 35s without having to cut my fender at all and without rubbing at all. So right now they stuff perfectly with zero rubbing and I hope I can be able to keep it working just as well with 35s. I'm not worried about it in the back at all because I already don't rub at all besides a little bit on the plastic bumper cover right here and it can either just rub there or if it's major and it's going to mangle something up then I'll just trim that up. That's not a big deal at all. I'm just trying to save the hassle of cutting into my metal fenders and having to do with rust since I'm in Michigan. It's really hard to paint them unless I take it and get it professionally repainted and have it not rust. And I also want to note that since I'm running the Detail Fabworks bumper up here and it has, it's all just tube so you can see clear through, I've already gone through and cut all of this metal out. So the only thing that could possibly interfere is this very front bracket for the fender. And if I have to trim a little bit more off that, that's not a big deal. But I don't think that's going to be an issue because I just stuffed this yesterday. I had the tire stuffed all the way up to full bump and it wasn't even close to that. So I think with a 35 that's only going up realistically in diameter or in radius, it's only going to go up like an inch. So I don't think I'm going to have any issues with that. So going forward one inch is not going to cause me any issues in rubbing up here. It's just going to give me more clearance back here at this fender. But first things first, let's see if it's even possible with this stock drive shaft. Let's get this thing dropped and see what we got. Alright guys, so we got the drive shaft off, I ended up putting a mark on it right here if you can see that right before I pulled it out so I could see how much was actually in there. And I just measured it, we're sitting at about three and a quarter inches. And I read that the minimum engagement you can have at any time is two inches. So now the question is just, will my drive shaft move more than a quarter inch through the suspension travel? Here's what I think I'm going to do. I'm going to pull that boot off and then roughly reassemble the drive shaft and then I'll throw a jack under it and jack this thing up and get the axle to droop as much as I can on this side and see how much I can expect the drive shaft to pull out under a droop and then that'll tell me roughly if I'll have enough engagement. So let's give that a shot. So after recycling the suspension a few different ways now, I ended up finding out that actually I was thinking about it the exact opposite way that it would act. So when the driver's side is under droop, as you can see the differentials on that side, I assumed that that would mean that the drive shaft 
would be pulling out. But I was thinking about that wrong because actually as you are stuffing a tire, the control arm is becoming more horizontal and it's actually making it a farther distance away. And what I noticed was, I think because of the long arms, when I went to a full tuck, I hit bump, I didn't see any noticeable change in engagement with the drive shaft. I didn't see any gap between the line that I drew and that collar. But when I would droop it, there was actually more engagement and it would cover up my line. So basically what that's telling me is I think we're good to go. So I think next up we're gonna stretch this wheelbase. The next day. All right, so something a little unexpected happened. That is my trans oil pan. And that is a broken bolt. So this front axle stretch is gonna be on pause for a little bit. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. Two days later. All right, so I've been so busy, I completely forgot to get the camera back out. So here's a quick little update for you. I got the transmission pan back on. I was able to weld a nut onto the broken bolt and get that out. And now I have started do the stretch. This one I already have adjusted one inch. The lower one on that side is also one inch. Just gotta get the bolt back in and then do the upper arm and see how everything does. All right, I now have all of the control arms adjusted. So the one inch stretch is done. I just have to tighten everything back up. Um, the one thing I really don't like about the three link though is this spring that doesn't have, on the side that doesn't have the upper control arm. The spring always seems to be very leaned and that retainer is really close to it. And since I just stretched it one inch, it actually made contact. So what I did is I made this little rubber spacer that I had down here that just tapers it up on one side. I'm gonna see if that will solve this issue. The next morning. All right guys, so it's the next day since I finished up a little late last night. Wanted to just get inside, show how it's neat. But here's where we can save the day. We have the one inch stretch done. You can see that gap is a lot bigger now. You can see on the threads for the control arms, the clean thread showing how far we went out. All the control arms are adjusted. The one issue I notice now though, which isn't that big of a deal, but I think I'm gonna fix it, is this track bar after stretching it forward. You can see where the spring perch is mounted onto the axle. There's a plate right there, and there is a slight contact between the track bar and that plate. So what I'm thinking is I can just go ahead and grind that plate down a little bit and give myself some clearance. But I don't think it's any more than just the powder coat for the track bar touching it. So I feel like if I were to just leave it, it would probably just wear itself down. But I don't know if I really want to do that, so I think I'm going to clean it up and just make it right. And then here's another closer look at the spacer I made to change the angle of the spring. Which made this fit a lot better too. Now we don't have any contact, it doesn't sit any different than it did before the stretch. So the agenda for today is to see if we can make a little bit of clearance for that track bar. Um, I really don't want to tear the whole thing out of there. It's just a pain. So I think what I'm going to try and do is see if I can just flex out either side of it and then allow it to move and then I can grind underneath it and then above it while it moves. So let's give that a try and see how it goes. All right, I don't know if this is the best idea, but here's what we're going to try. Stack up some center blocks, some boards. 4x4 four four sitting there, see if I can drive up onto this, park it there, see if that'll flex out enough. And then move this track bar up and out of the way enough to where I can grind underneath it. 
and then I'll flex the other way and see if I can get any more above it if I need to. Okay, so driving up here definitely was a bit of a sketchy idea. The tire ended up putting pressure right on this corner. And I was just worried the whole time that these center blocks were going to kick out from underneath it. But luckily, we didn't have any issues. I put it up there, looked at stuff, found out the track bar doesn't actually move enough to be able to grind behind it. So this idea wasn't going to work anyways. So I went up there and came right back down after that. But something cool did happen. And I think I'm not going to have to worry about this anymore. Let's take a look right here. So I don't know if you're going to be able to see that on the camera. But. After we flex it out on those center blocks. It looks like the track bar actually put just enough pressure on that bracket. That it just bent it enough to where now we have a little bit of clearance back there. It's still really close. But I think if that's the case, it's barely touching at any point, then I don't think it's anything to worry about. It might scratch the powder curl off a little bit, but I think for now I'm just going to leave it. If it does appear that it's going to be an issue, then I'll end up taking the whole track bar off and give that some clearance. But for now, I think we're just going to roll the way it is.